Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Halloween is just around the corner, which is actually next week. So I'm about to review a movie review of a 90's awesome classic that I went to see on Memorial Day weekend with my family when I was 10 years old. It's called Casper, also known as Casper the Friendly Ghost. It's a 1995 adaptation of a popular series that was created by Harvey Comics, the same people that gave us Richie Rich and all the others that followed. Which apparently Richie Rich had became a 1994 live action adaptation of the same name, which stars Macaulay Colgan. But this one, of course, came out a few months after Richie Rich which was already been playing at second run theaters at the time. Uh, already being ready to be on home video. And I went to see it and had a very good time. You know, had, it was very... Um, they put a lot of good effort to this movie. Yeah, it was very uh, visually imaginative. They had a lot of great special effects that they throw into it. It's all done in CGI. Yeah, that gives it a third dimensional... Yeah, you could tell this had a lot of 3D effects that they went into, you know, by post-production and all the other stuff that they did. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of great cast that they throw in, including Christina Ricci from the Addams Family films, yeah, the first two. It's hard to believe that she winds up in this film, along with Bill Pullman from Spaceballs, as well as Kathy Moriarty from Raging Bull and Eric Idle from Monty Python and all these other celebrity cameos that they throw in into the film and all this other stuff you just can't go wrong with it it was a Steven Spielberg production by writers Sherry Stoner and Deanna Oliver you know, the same writers that gave us Tiny Toot Adventures and Animaniacs so it did have a lot of witty dialogue that they put into it this was directed by Brad Silverman, who gave us City of Angels that followed, yeah, and all these other films that he's been doing on his resume. Um, this was, of course, a DVD that I bought um, a year ago at Barnes Noble. It was, in fact, I got this for free as part of the buy two, get one free sale. Yeah, because I bought some more DVDs and all this other stuff. And I ended up getting this for free because, you know, in fact, at first I was going to get this at Target for only 4 bucks, but they were sold out, so I thought it would be okay to buy this since I only own the VHS tape, and I wanted to watch this in widescreen, and, and it had lots of special features. Well, not that many, but it just had some of them. So I thought this would be a good upgrade you know, before the Blu-ray was going to come out, which just recently just came out already with a new... 8 high definition transfer. Uh, in fact, it even looks much better than its DVD counterpart that they have here. It has the same extras as before. I was expecting some of them was going to be missing. Yeah, it turns out it was the DVD ROM features that were missing, but I guess that's okay. Yeah, it, it's worth it. But they could have at least had put some more special features, like maybe some more deleted scenes instead of just one, which was actually a, a musical sequence that they were supposed to put in. And maybe they could have put in like all this other stuff that they had. Yeah. In fact, I did spot a work print of the same film, so... I mean, quality's not the best, but yeah, what can you do? But I think they had some certain scenes that might be missing. So either way, yeah, I would definitely check that out. But this is the movie uh, I definitely really enjoyed as a kid. Uh, I still enjoy it today, you know, growing up. You know, I'm almost pushing 30 now. <laughs> Hard to believe, yeah, because I'm 29 now. And I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I always enjoy everything that they went into it. And growing up watching the cartoon, I was, I was always been fascinated by, by Casper the Friendly Ghost. I mean, he, he's definitely what he is. You know, a little boy, you know, who just. Um, who wants to becoming a ghost and he always wants to be friends with everybody but unfortunately everybody started getting scared a lot yeah what do you expect he's a ghost 
And plus you get the ghostly trio in the mix, which are basically the Free Stooges of all Ghost. Yeah, they do a lot of crazy stuff together, you know. Of course, they always pick on Casper a lot, and, you know, they treat him like, you know, he's this... <laughs> He's their slave or something like that. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's for sure. Um, but anyway, I used to watch this cartoon a lot, you know, growing up. and Along with all the other um, Harvey Comics cartoons, including Richie Rich. They used to play it um, Sunday mornings in syndication. Oh, and as a result, um, I even have the Halloween bucket from Jack in the Box back in 2003. That features the, the characters from um, Casper, the friendly ghost. Yeah, you can see it right here. I'm going to turn her around. This is Look at all these Halloween. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Um, I own it for, I had this for a very long time, um, 10 years now. So it's, it's still. Still worth having, you know, for those who love Casper. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm going to get right to it because I, I really enjoy this movie and I really want to review everything that went into this uh, beautiful piece of art. It stars Christina Ricci with Bill Pullman, Kathleen Moriarty, Eric Idle, along with Ben Stein, Joe Napode, Joe Alaski, Brad Garrett. Amy Brenneman, Devin Saw, Garrett Redliff Henson, Jessica Wesson, Don Novello, John Kasser, and Malachi Pearson, who does the voice of Casper, the friendly ghost. And it's written by Sherry Stoner and Deanna Oliver. Yep, the same writers behind Titan Adventures and Animaniacs, and it's directed by Brad Silverlin, the same director that gave us City of Angels. So let's get right to it. The movie begins when an evil, crazy, and yet very greedy woman named Carrington Crittenton, who's played by Kathleen Moriarty, had attended at the reading of her late father's will with her attorney, Paul Dibbs Plusker, who was played by Eric Idle. They had soon have found out that his hidden treasures had been buried inside an old Whitstaff manor in Friendship, Maine. But once they finally attended there, they had soon discovered that, that the mansion is very haunted by a lonely but yet very friendly ghost named Casper. But even worse, is his free obnoxious uncles, also known as the ghostly trio, named Stretch, Fatso, and Stinky. So, as a result, they started scaring them away throughout the entire mansion so until Carrigan and Dibs had hired several professionals, including Father Glido and Ray Stance, to get rid of them. Unfortunately, that didn't work out as, as tired as they planned to be. Of course, I like the fact that they throw in a lot of cameo appearances in this. Yeah, especially with Ghostbusters and all. So later, a demolish, so later, a demolition team had decided to destroy the house altogether. Once again, <laughs> all being scared away by the ghost. So that didn't turn out so great. So, as a result, um, Casper, feeling very lonely, decided to find a cure by um, watching television as he discovers on hard copy that Dr. James Harvey, a paranormal therapist who actually helps ghosts complete their unfinished business and not cross over. Yeah, and he's played by Bill Pullman, along with his daughter, Kat, who's played by Christina Ricci. So... So Casper had manipulated Kerrigan by contacting Dr. Harvey to visit the manor himself. So, so Dr. Harvey and Cat had traveled around the country straight to Maine in search of his ghost of his deceased wife named Amelia, who was played by Amy Brenneman. 
So they actually moved there to Whipstaff, but Casper, but Casper has attempted to befriend Cap, which actually backfires when his uncles arrive at home and causes very havoc. Yeah, because yeah, it causes a lot of havoc with their guests alone. Yeah, including you know attacking Harvey in a sword fight with them. Yeah, <laughs> going around doing a lot of crazy stuff. And of course, you do see the scene where where they actually dive inside <laughs> you know, Harvey's uh, mouth and suddenly, you know, once he went inside the bathroom, he changed it. You know, he washes his face and you see, you know, three cameo appearances. Uh, you see four cameo appearances of, of Clint Eastwood, of Rodney Dangerfield, Mel Gibson, and of course, the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. So yeah, just to throw in as an extra. So that was really cool. Well, anyway, as everything turned out, you know, since he finally stopped them, the very next morning, you know, just to be ready in time for for Cat to go on his first day at school, um, they were about to have breakfast, you know, with Casper, you know, making breakfast with everybody. Yeah, and then the ghostly trio, you know, came along and you know, do a lot of crazy things during that day. So, <laughs> so on and so forth. Well, anyway, um, uh, yeah. Once Cat finally begins her first day at school, he actually found out that that her class is about to attend at a Halloween party, which apparently, you know, was already been shut down due to asbestos. She's being befriended by classmate Vic, who's also best friends with a snobby but very spoiled class president named Amber to hold a Halloween party at her beach house. So unfortunately it turns out that Kat decided to host the Halloween party at Whiffstaff instead of you know, Amber's uh, beach house. So so that's what leads to um, Vic asking Kat on a date which apparently Casper really wanted to go out with her you know, alone. But Cat also had learned that Casper had no memories at all, you know, during his childhood days. He finally discovered his old toy box in, in his own room filled with a lot of stuff and memories that he actually grew up with when he was alive. But that's when he found out that his father was an inventor named J.T. McFadden, who actually had a son actually playing inside the old sleigh and then all of a sudden he got really sick. And, ex and suddenly passed away due to a fatal illness, which happens to be pneumonia. So, as a result, J.D. McFadden had actually invented a machine known as the Lazarus, you know, just to uh, resurrect uh, Casper, you know, from the dead. Unfortunately, he went into an insane asylum, and we never heard of him ever since. So, Casper had found the machine, the Lazarus, with apparently keratin and dibs he snuck in after the ghostly trio had dragged Dr. Harvey out for a happy hour at a karaoke bar. Which apparently the trios themselves were constantly trying to kill Dr. Harvey so they could become one of them. Once Casper finally took Cat to a secret passage down into McFadden's laboratory. Keratin and Dibs had spotted the vault, which they assumed that's where the treasure is. Well, they did found it, and, it, and I'm not going to get that part of away. But then they started to steal the formula, which apparently is the one that they used, which was a red liquid inside a bottle to use for, you know, for Casper to go inside the machine and be able to, and once we turn on the lever, he'll be soon become, you know, Reassured you know, into his normal body, but everything seems to go completely wrong once they stole that. Just fighting with each other, you know, trying to figure it out if you know, which one's going to become the ghost. Yeah, apparently Kerrigan wants to become one. And then he starts once again. They start going around stealing the treasure and everything until you know she finally got what she deserved at the end. After finding out about Dr. Harvey already being killed, you know, they decided to resurrect him 
from the machine since Casper was going to try to do it. Of course, Cat's school crew had finally arrived inside the mansion only to find out what's going on. And they, and they finally formed a party. So everything turned out okay until you know, Am Amelia finally showed up inside Casper's room to finally make way for a uh, sort of like a Cinderella fairy tale which you know what was it like if uh, if you wound up attending at the ball all the way up until midnight and then suddenly the magic disappears well Casper winds up becoming the young boy that's already being reassured by a magical spirit that Amelia had gave him Yep, turned out to be David Sawa's character. <laughs> yeah, they started dancing together, and so everything turned out okay until until the final end when they finally discovered that he turned into, as we speak, a ghost. Because they all scream very loud, and they and they ran straight to the door. They finally escaped from all that, and <laughs> and when you know the movie finally was over with. With the ghostly trio, as well as Casper and Dr. Harvey and and Cat dancing around, you know, to the song "Casper the Friendly Ghost" that's sung by Little Richard, you know. and it was fun. You know, I really enjoyed the movie a lot. I, it's you know, it never gets old. It, it would be played many times, especially on Halloween, and yeah, because I. You know, I do watch it sometimes whenever it's on, you know. Yeah, they, they really put a lot of good effort um, into this production. Yeah, you know, with the whole entire crew, you know, they really put a lot of CGI, 3D effects on on Casper and the Ghostly Trio. Because they really did a lot of good stuff into it. So even the other ghost, you know, with um, Amelia and um, as well as Carrington and... Unfortunately, you know, we never saw, you know, what uh, Eric Idle's character, Dibs, was going to become. I mean, since he was already being knocked out of the park into the window. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, she kicked him all the way up there. I never even got to see what happened to uh, Dibs' character. I mean, yeah, he may be dead or, or not, but I would have loved to see him as a ghost. To see the difference. You know, they could have put that as... As possibly a post-credit ending to that scene. Yeah, but too bad they didn't put that, so that's a shame. It could have been part of the deleted scenes, maybe, perhaps. Yeah, shame. But, uh, yeah, Catherine Variety did such a crazy job in, in that role. That, you know, who would have thought that this is the same actress that was in Raging Bull you know, back in 1980. So, yeah. And she was very young back then, you know. I, I believe she was like 18 or 19 when she played that role, uh, the wife of Jake Lamada. She also went on to do the film Neighbors with Dan Aykroyd, surprisingly enough. Uh, a very underrated film, by the way, with uh, John Belushi yeah, in his last film role yeah, before he died a few months later due to a drug overdose. Yeah, definitely check that movie out if you, if you must, because... That's where I've started to see those two. Because they, they both play couples. Um, a lot of great creativity they put into it. They, it had a lot of witty dialogue that's written by those two. Yeah, because I could see it, it became more cartoonish in that sort of way. And the fact that they, they throw in all this other stuff and at random. Yeah, everything they went into it was really cool. And I love the haunted mansion that they chose. I mean, it definitely looks like you're really inside the, that mansion. And it had a lot of... Good stuff that they went into it. Also, uh, Pope Bill Pullman did a very good job playing the, you know, Dr. Harvey. You know, you know c considering the fact that he was in the role in Spaceballs and all these other films he's been in in his career. Yeah, I thought he did a lot of comedy elements that went towards it. Yeah, especially when he got drunk during the karaoke bar with the ghostly trio. And he keeps dragging him around, you know. <laughs> So on and so forth, you know, but <laughs> and I, I thought they were, <laughs> and, they, and they were good together with them. Yeah, and, and Christina Ricci, you know, as beautiful and cute back then as a teenager, 
because he was she was always been cute back in the day when she was in the movie you know the Adams family when she played Wednesday yeah you know after her her first screen debut in the movie Mermaids with Bob Hoskins and Cher yeah she did a very good job in this movie as well uh, in fact this was sort of a big year back then in 1995 because that same year after Casper she went on to do the film Now and Den and Gold Diggers Secrets of the Bear Mountain um, surprisingly underrated movie when it came out um, yeah so th this was like a very big year for her and she did yeah in fact she also became one of my favorite actresses of all time too yes I did used to love watching all of her films back then and yeah, I did have a celebrity crush on her um, I couldn't blame anybody for that for that reason alone but she also had a lot of you know, great talent you know been a lot of great movies over the years back in the 90s all the way through pretty much today yes yeah, she, um, she's still doing movies today though um, but fortunately she's doing those independent movies that you know that never got my interest I mean the last movie I saw her in that was um, a live-action movie by the way which also was based on a cartoon classic Japanese animated cartoon called Speed Racer. Yeah, that was the last movie I saw her in where she played Trixie. Uh, she was okay in that film. Uh, had, had no problem with that. Yeah, Eric Idle, as usual, does a fine good job playing the dibs. You know, he was very funny in this movie as well. You know, coming from Mighty Python, he's always been worth watching. And, and especially in movies like Nuns on the Run and uh, Splitting Hairs. He's always fun to watch. Um, I always love him. Yeah, Monty Python has always been one of my favorites during my childhood days. I mean, yeah, with John Cleese, you know, Terry Gilliam, Terry Jones, and all the rest. Yeah, Flying Circus, and Monty Python and the Holy Grail, along with Life of Brian, The Meaning of Life. Yeah, you just can't go wrong with these movies. Yeah. And all these shows and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but the real spirit behind this movie, uh, besides the ghostly trio, yeah, they're like the free stooges of all ghosts. You know, they go around doing a lot of crazy stuff together. And they always steal a lot of scenes in the movie, <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, all voiced by Brad Garrett. Joe Alasky, Joe Nepote is definitely Casper the Friendly Ghost because no doubt about it, I mean this is his story. We knew exactly how this movie was going to start from the beginning all the way to the end uh, of how he remembers and what he don't remember, you know, during his childhood days and he finally got discovered, you know, after all this time. You know. That was the real truth behind the story. And it was very well written. Um, definitely in for a treat, um, especially for Halloween. So if you ever get a chance to watch this movie, Casper is, is the one film that you would definitely enjoy the most. Uh, despite of its problems, you know, it, it had its flaws, but that's okay. And also, the movie did have its sequels because it already did become a, a very smash hit at the box office you know, during the summer. They started making so many sequels that follow and and I had to say none of them were any good. Um, the Spirit of Christmas was actually uh, quite decent for a direct-to-video release. Yeah, it was released by Universal once again which also released this movie. But and the, as well as Scare School and all those others and they even had a TV series that follows. Yeah, not as good. Oh, and, and of course, the 1996 TV series that aired on Fox, which is an animated series, and I really enjoy that one, too. It was really fun to watch. Um, wish I could find that on DVD. And, but of course, who couldn't forget those lousy direct-to-video sequels by Fox and Savon? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Casper is Spirited Beginning, which happens to be a prequel of the first Casper movie, yeah, which apparently throws in a lot of Saban references and all this other stuff that they put in, like Big Bad Beetleboards, 
action figure inside the room and all that. So this, this whole movie didn't make any sense. And then the dreaded Casper meets Wendy movie with Hilary Duff as Wendy the Witch. Oh my fucking god. Okay, pardon my language, but I, I just cannot stand Hilary Duff in any movie that she's been in. Including her stupid uh, Lizzie McGuire role that she wants up in. Yeah, because she was very popular once that series came out on the Disney Channel back in the early 2000s. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so unpleasant to watch. Not a big fan of her. In fact, she just recently had a... I'm not a bit surprised, but she had a, a quietly comeback already. Um, in fact, she just recently released her new CD. Yeah. Who would have thought? You know, I thought she just faded into obscurity uh, a couple years ago. <laughs> After her last movie became a flop. called was tried to become the next Juno called According to Greta. Yeah, what a dumb movie that turned out to be. Okay, um, but back to that basics though. Casper is a fun imaginative and stunningly beautiful film that you would definitely watch over and over you never get tired of it you always enjoy all the humor and the laughter that they put into it and it's definitely worth watching on Halloween <laughs> in fact you can watch it anytime you like no matter what including on DVD and Blu-ray and HD by the way you have digital copies that's floating around so there you go. So anyway, I recommend Casper, The Friendly Ghost, the 1995 film, a solid four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.